Welcome to the module on protein terminology. For this discussion, we will define terms related to protein utilization by dairy cows. Cows eat protein to obtain amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks from which all proteins are synthesized. Therefore, cows must be fed crude protein in the diet if they are to synthesize milk protein and muscle protein. There are 20 amino acids that make up all proteins. The simplest amino acid is glycine, but the amino acid most often referred to as being deficient in the diet of lactating dairy cows is methionine. The chemical structure of glycine and methionine are shown in this figure. Other amino acids have different chemical structures. All amino acids have an amino or an NH2 group and a carboxyl or a COOH group, and all amino acids contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Methionine and cysteine also contain sulfur. Peptides and amino acids can be formed by hooking amino acids together with chemical bonds. If adequate energy is available, two amino acids can be hooked together with a chemical bond between the amino group of one amino acid and the carboxyl group of the second amino acid to form a dipeptide, as is shown in this figure. In hooking the amino acids together, water is formed. When an amino acid is hooked onto a dipeptide, a tripeptide is produced. When several amino acids are connected together by chemical bonds, a protein is formed. Amino acids are hooked together in a specific order and a specific amount to form specific proteins. Proteins in soybean meal, alfalfa, corn, milk, and muscle are large proteins and contain a large number of amino acids. Each of these feeds contain a different amount of protein and a different amount of individual amino acids, and the order in which the amino acids are hooked together is also different. The quantity of each amino acid put into these different proteins and the order in which they are hooked together is determined by the genetics of the plant or animal. Protein in milk and muscle has a different amino acid composition, and the amino acids are hooked together in a different order. If any of these 20 amino acids are not supplied to meet the requirements of the mammary gland for milk protein synthesis or the requirements of muscle for growth, then milk protein production and growth stops. No more protein can be produced until the deficient amino acid is supplied. Furthermore, amino acids supplied in excess of utilization are destroyed because they cannot be stored in the body unless they are incorporated into protein. Therefore, it is important that amino acids be provided in the proper amounts and ratios to meet the requirements of the dairy animal for growth and milk production. When you buy protein supplements or have homegrown feed analyzed for protein, the feed tag or the laboratory that conducts the analysis reports the protein content of the feed as crude protein. To determine the total crude protein in a feed, the feed is analyzed for nitrogen and the nitrogen content of the feed is multiplied by 6.25. The value of 6.25 is used because there are 16 pounds of nitrogen in 100 pounds of protein. Therefore, 100 pounds of protein divided by 16 pounds of nitrogen gives a constant value of 6.25. For example, alfalfa hay contains 3% nitrogen. If 3% nitrogen is multiplied by 6.25, it yields 18.75% crude protein in alfalfa hay. Non-protein nitrogen, NPN, is any form of nitrogen other than several amino acids hooked together to form a protein. Examples of non-protein nitrogen are urea, monoammonium phosphate, and free amino acids that are not connected together in long chains by chemical bonds. In contrast to crude protein, which is total nitrogen multiplied by 6.25, true protein is only the nitrogen in a long chain of amino acids multiplied by 6.25. Crude protein of diets fed to dairy cows is a mixture of true protein and non-protein nitrogen 
because feeds such as alfalfa haylage and corn silage contain a mixture of true protein and non-protein nitrogen. Therefore, the crude protein content of a diet is greater than the true protein content of a diet. For non-protein nitrogen to be utilized by dairy cattle, the animals must be old enough for the rumen to be functional, and the non-protein nitrogen must be incorporated into microbial protein, which upon digestion in the small intestine contributes amino acids to be used by the cow. Non-protein nitrogen is sometimes added to feeds for dairy cows, and it is usually supplied as urea. This slide shows how to calculate the non-protein nitrogen content of a dairy feed when the non-protein nitrogen is supplied as urea. Urea contains 46% nitrogen. The constant to convert nitrogen to crude protein is 6.25. Therefore, to convert nitrogen in urea to crude protein, multiply the 46% nitrogen by 6.25. Urea contains an equivalent of 287% crude protein. Yes, urea does contain more than 100% crude protein. Second, determine the amount of crude protein supplied in the feed from non-protein nitrogen on the feed tag. Third, divide the percent non-protein nitrogen on the feed tag by 287, which is the crude protein equivalent of urea, to determine the percent urea in the dairy feed. For example, if there is 11.5% non-protein nitrogen in a 36% crude protein dairy feed, divide the 11.5% non-protein nitrogen by 287. This 36% crude protein dairy feed contains 4% urea. If 4 pounds of this 36% crude protein dairy feed is fed to each cow daily and it contains 4% urea, then each cow will consume 0.16 pounds of urea. No more than 4 tenths pound of urea should be fed per cow per day. Feeding urea to dairy cows has little or no benefit in diets that contain 16 to 18 percent crude protein. Laboratory reports for crude protein PN will show available and unavailable crude protein. The available crude protein is that available for digestion by cows. 90% or more of the crude protein in forages should be available for digestion. If available crude protein is less than 90%, this can indicate that the forage has been heat damaged, that the forage was too mature when harvested, or that there is a high concentration of grass in the forage. Unavailable crude protein is crude protein that is not available for digestion. The unavailable crude protein should be less than 10% of the total crude protein. The unavailable fraction represents protein that is bound to the fiber and cannot be digested. If the unavailable crude protein in forage harvested at the correct maturity with a low grass content is greater than 10%, it indicates the forage has heated during storage. The heating causes a Maillard reaction between amino acids and sugars. The Maillard reaction renders amino acids, specifically lysine, unavailable for digestion. The protein is caramelized and has a sweet taste and a caramel to black color. The caramelized feed is readily eaten by cattle if it is not overly heat damaged. The digestibility of the protein will be decreased and the magnitude of the depression in protein digestibility will depend upon the amount of heat damage. The severity of heat damage and the amount of protein that is bound and unavailable for digestion is estimated by the amount of nitrogen that is attached to the acid detergent fiber fraction of the forage. This estimation is not always accurate because some of the protein attached to the fiber may be digestible. Unavailable crude protein may be reported as acid detergent fiber crude protein, unavailable crude protein, or bound crude protein.
To avoid caramelization and heating, harvest and store forages properly. Start by harvesting forages at the proper stage of maturity. Alfalfa should be harvested at the bud to early bloom stage of maturity. Alfalfa should be stored at the correct moisture content. The moisture content of alfalfa silage should be 45 to 50 percent when stored in oxygen limiting structures, 55 to 60 percent in conventional silos, and 65 to 70 percent in bunker silos and silo bags. The forage should be chopped long enough to maintain milk fat test, but short enough for good packing and fermentation. Storage structures should be well maintained, fill rapidly, and sealed adequately to prevent exposure of the silage to oxygen. Exposure of silage to oxygen because of poor repair of structures or poor filling and storage techniques will cause heating which decreases the magnitude of the digestibility. The total crude protein content of forages from laboratory reports is corrected for unavailable crude protein and reported as adjusted crude protein. All forages contain some unavailable crude protein. It is generally assumed that 10% of the crude protein in forage is unavailable. More than 10% unavailable crude protein in forage is considered to be excessive and should be subtracted from total crude protein to determine the adjusted crude protein that is used to balance rations. For example, to calculate the adjusted crude protein in alfalfa silage, first calculate the normal amount of unavailable crude protein in the alfalfa silage. To do this, multiply the crude protein content of the alfalfa silage, which was determined to be 20% by 0.1, because the normal amount of unavailable crude protein in forage is 10% of the total crude protein. This indicates that two percentage units of the crude protein in this alfalfa is normal unavailable crude protein. Second, determine the amount of excessive unavailable crude protein. Excessive unavailable crude protein is estimated by determining the acid detergent fiber nitrogen in this alfalfa and multiplying by 6.25 to estimate acid detergent fiber crude protein. This provides an estimate of the percentage of total acid detergent fiber crude protein or of the unavailable crude protein in the alfalfa. If the assayed total acid detergent fiber crude protein in the alfalfa is greater than the normal acid detergent fiber crude protein or the unavailable crude protein, then subtract the normal unavailable crude protein from the total unavailable crude protein to determine the excessive unavailable crude protein. Therefore, for this alfalfa, 4% Total unavailable crude protein minus 2% normal unavailable crude protein equals 2% excessive unavailable crude protein. For step three in determining the adjusted crude protein in alfalfa silage, one subtracts the normal percentage of unavailable crude protein, which was 2%, from the total unavailable crude protein, which was 4%, to determine the excessive unavailable crude protein, which is 2%. The excessive unavailable crude protein of 2% is then subtracted from the total crude protein, which was 20%, and the adjusted crude protein content of this alfalfa silage is 18%. The adjusted crude protein, or 18% crude protein for this alfalfa silage, is then used to balance rations. Crude protein is nitrogen multiplied by 6.25. Crude protein contains true protein and non-protein nitrogen. Crude protein can be partitioned into available crude protein and unavailable crude protein. The unavailable crude protein is the crude protein bound to the acid detergent fiber and it increases when protein is overheated. Unavailable crude protein is mostly undigestible and is excreted in the feces. Available crude protein can be divided into rumen degradable and rumen undegradable fractions. The rumen degradable crude protein can be either soluble or insoluble, 
and is used by the microbes for protein synthesis. Rumen undegradable crude protein is largely insoluble and passes to the small intestine. Rumen undegradable crude protein is partitioned into digestible and undigestible fractions in the intestine. The crude protein digested in the small intestine supplies amino acids to the cow and the undigested crude protein is excreted in the feces. This concludes the module on protein terminology.